Welcome and thank you for joining us for the first ever virtual orientation to the Division of Library and Information Services. While we can't be together in person right now, I hope you'll enjoy this glimpse of the staff, services, collections, and programs the Division offers and supports for our libraries of all types throughout Florida. I'm Emily Hart, the new Director Connections and E-Rate Consultant within the Bureau of Library Development, also known as BLD. The Bureau is one of three comprising the division. I'll be sharing some high-level information about the Bureau's services and programs, with more detailed information shared by my BLD colleagues later in the orientation. Staff from the Bureau of Archives and Records Management and the Bureau of Library and Network Services will also be sharing information that we hope provides an introduction to whet your curiosity. The division works under the umbrella of the Florida Department of State. Here is our primary location, the R.A. Gray Building in Tallahassee. Our Bureau works to serve the library staff of Florida in many ways. Our slogan is, if you work for a Florida library, we work for you. One of the roles we take most seriously is collecting library data and tracking trends in the field. We want to hear about the issues facing your community and new approaches you're interested in pursuing and devise ways to support you and your staff. This also involves listening to and collaborating with other state library agencies and systems around the country to hear what they're doing and bring their ideas to you. The division is the designated grantee of the Federal Institute of Museum and Library Services, or IMLS, Grants to States program, which is managed and administered by BLD staff. Each state and territory has a state library administrative agency, 59 in all. In 2020, we received approximately 8.9 million in LSTA grant funds from IMLS, and with the support of the State Library Council, awarded grants to eligible libraries throughout Florida. We use part of those grant funds to support statewide programs like Ask a Librarian, the Courier Service, and Florida Library Webinars, as well as BLD programs such as Summer Reading, the Sunshine State Library Leadership Institute, Community Engagement, and the Florida Electronic Library. The Florida Memory Project and Flynn Share It, managed by our sister bureaus, are also funded by LSTA dollars. This photo shows the state aid to libraries formula. You're probably familiar with state aid as it supports most libraries in Florida through operating grants and helps fund the multi-county cooperatives. Equalization funds are also distributed to libraries in Florida's rural counties. We also administer grants for construction or renovation or expansion of library facilities. These are just a few of the many programs managed by our consultants that are used every day by you and your patrons. BLD consultants are happy to discuss their programs with you and answer any questions you might have. If you don't know who to talk to in the Division of Library and Information Services with questions about one of our programs, working with another state agency, or any other topic you might face as a library director, your county liaison is a great first phone call. If you don't know who your liaison is, this map shows our current county assignments. When a patron walks through your doors and doesn't know where to start, your reference staff helps to orient them and start them on their way. The Bureau of Library Development serves that same function to all library staff in Florida, from directors to pages. If you have a question, we will help find the answers. We are your reference desk. If you have any questions about the services offered or collections described in this video tour, please don't hesitate to contact me and, or my colleagues. Matthew Story from the State Archives will talk to you next, followed by Isabella Fulmar from the State Library. Thank you. Uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I hope by now that you've already seen the great feature on the State Library and Archives by the Florida Channel, uh, Florida Crossroads. In it, you'll have learned a lot about Florida memory and some of the Bureau of Archives and Records Management's 
most public facing projects, but that's just a part of what we do. My name's Matthew Story. I'm a reference archivist uh, working for the State Archives of Florida. And today I'm going to tell you a little more about some of the other things that the, the Bureau of Archives and Records Management does. So we're going to go through very briefly our reference services and some of the things that are available in our physical collections. We're going to talk about our collections management archivists and the work they do to keep our collection organized and preserved uh, and indeed always growing. We're going to talk about our responsibility as Florida's Capital Post-Conviction Public Records Repository. And finally, we're going to talk about our records management program and some of the ways that we help all other state agencies keep track of their public records. So beginning with our reference services, we collect and make available historical records in five major collecting areas, those being state government records, local government records, historical manuscripts, photographs, and genealogical materials. Now, we have more than 50,000 cubic feet of records, and, and we simply can't make it all available online on floridamemory.com. I work in the State Archives reference section with two other full-time archivists. It's our job to help patrons access and navigate those records that aren't available digitally. And that's over 99% of our total holdings. So it, it's quite a lot. Our services are available to support all kinds of research from legal matters to genealogy. Even if a patron's just beginning a research project and, and you know maybe you can direct them over to us, we're always happy to suggest some starting points in our collections. We are available to remote researchers, researchers as well. In most cases, we can provide scans or something of records in our collection for a small fee. Uh, so next, I think we should walk through some of the types of requests the reference section can help with. Legal researchers will be interested in the case files of the Supreme Court of Florida. We have records from almost every case the court issued an opinion on right up through the mid 2010s. We even have uh, court records from before there was a Supreme Court in Florida uh, when the Territorial Court of Appeals was the highest court. Um, you know, here we see uh, a record from a lower court included with the Supreme Court's file. Uh, this is the sentencing document in the case of a, the theft of a cow. So, you know, if any of you are, are thinking of stealing a cow, think twice. Uh, it could be two years. Uh, we also have, you know, tons of other cases. It's um, a, a very rich collection of Florida's legal history, uh, including even the original appeal in the case of Gideon versus Wainwright, which is uh, eventually established all of our rights to an attorney, right? These are landmarks of American legal history here in our collections. We also have files as the official repository for the records of Florida's legislature. We can locate legislative history documents, including staff analysis and amendment files, uh, even audio recordings for any bill introduced since 1969. Uh, you know, this works very nicely with the published laws of Florida that my colleagues at the State Library have. We also have records from bills that did not pass. Uh, one of my personal favorites uh, is the, uh, from the middle 1970s, there was a, a Skunk Ape Protection Act for our, uh, our mythical, or perhaps not, uh, cousin of Bigfoot down in the Tampa area. Um, plenty of records there, uh, and it's something that we work with a lot for patrons. In addition to an extensive selection of genealogical publications and periodicals, we have numerous archival records to support family research, including voter and tax rolls, early land records, uh, plenty more outside of government records. We also have a historical manuscripts collection consisting of records of private individuals in non-public entities from or relating to Florida. Um, so, you know, I, I know plenty of genealogical researchers get started at their local library. Um, we are always happy to, uh, you know, help folks who refer to us uh, dig a little deeper and hopefully find some, some really, really neat and really personal parts of their family's history. 
moving on now to some some of the behind the scenes work, uh, we have a staff of five full time archivists in our collections management section. They work every day to expand our collections and make them more accessible to the public. So they'll actively seek donations of new historical manuscripts, collections, or transfers of government records. They also arrange, describe, and preserve uh, all the records in our custody. They develop and maintain our series descriptions and finding aids, including our online catalog, which is what, um, you know, which is how a lot of our researchers are going to interact with the, the collections to, to later uh, let reference know what they want to see. The image on the right shows some examples of the various ages and formats of records that our collections archivists work with. Uh, you might recognize that you know, Florida, uh, the Spanish land grant record from the Crossroads video. There's some older formats of photography there, um, magnetic reel-to-reel -reel audio tape. So really there there's a, a lot of variety in, in the, the things that they're going to be working with. Now, I know many libraries field questions about potential donations, uh, you know, be it of personal papers or, you know, a, a collection of artifacts, you know, a, a an individual has, has gathered over the years. Um, you know, if you think something like that might have a home at the State Archives of Florida, I would encourage you to reach out to me. Uh, my contact information, of course, was at the beginning. I'll share it again at the end of this presentation. I'll be happy to, to, to put anybody in touch with the collections archivist. They'll be uh, thrilled to discuss uh, potential donation or anything of that nature. In addition to our, our, you know, more traditional historical records collections uh, and the things that most of our patrons will seek to access, the State Archives is designated by statute as Florida's Capital Post-Conviction Public Records Repository. As directed by law, we receive copies of records and death penalty cases from Florida law enforcement agencies, prosecutors, medical examiners, you know, any other agencies that might hold records relating to a particular case, and we provide copies of those records to attorneys representing death row inmates, thus ensuring the availability of necessary records for post-conviction appeals. Uh, you know, this is maybe not what uh, tons of your patrons might be looking for, but it is uh, you know, a, a pretty major responsibility of ours and a big part of the work that we do. Uh, another major part of the work that we do uh, that is you know, not quite so public facing is our records management programs. Uh, while the business of government offices at all levels in Florida generates countless public records, the state archives does not keep every single one of these for their historical value, nor, nor could we. Instead, our records management section develops retention schedules to guide the keeping and disposition of Florida's public records in all public agencies. These schedules indicate how long each category of public records should be retained. Uh, they cover everything from meeting reminders, which you know, really only need to be retained until after that meeting's over, right? And, you know, they don't have much value any longer after that, uh, all the way to something like records designating a certain building as a historic site, which are retained permanently. These retention schedules flag some categories of records for review by our collections management archivists prior to disposition since you know some things might have potential archival value um, and things that our archivist identifies having archival value are subsequently accessioned into the state archives collections uh, at this point it is worth noting uh, of particular interest to um, you know our, our our friends in public libraries around florida in addition to the the you know, kind of general public record schedule there is a a separate and discrete uh, general record schedule for public libraries. It's going to offer some guidance on, you know, some of the things that that you might encounter most often in in your work. You know, from annual reports, circulation records, things like that. That is uh, the GS15 for public libraries. It's available online, and I'll be happy to to send you a link if you want to learn a little more. In addition to establishing records retention schedules and developing administrative rules and guidelines, our records management staff do offer frequent training seminars and webinars on those on the basic principles and best practices of records management, uh, as well as the responsibilities that, that those of us who deal with or generate public records in the course of our work ought to be aware of. The Bureau, um, you know, as a as a complement to these records management 
activities also provides long-term public record storage, retrieval, and destruction services at the State Records Center. Uh, this is a, a low-cost alternative to, to using you know, office space that might be at more of a premium uh, for storing records that are less active in, but still need to be maintained. Um, this has, I believe, uh, about a quarter million cubic feet of total storage capacity. Um, and again, it, it's it's for agencies within 120 miles of Tallahassee. It's our privilege to work with Florida's uh, history and government every day. Uh, I'm sure I speak for my colleagues in the Bureau of Archives and Records Management when I say that I'm always happy to assist you or your patrons with any questions you may have about our collections, our programs, or, or any of the services we can provide, really. Um, the best point of contact is going to be uh, our reference team. So again, that's me and, and two other archivists. You can reach out to us at archives at dos.myflorida.com or at 850-245-6719. Uh, I'll look forward to hearing from you. Next, I'm going to turn it over to one of my colleagues from the State Library of Florida, Isabella Fulmer. Thank you, Matthew. And thank you all for joining me uh, for this virtual tour of the State Library of Florida for public library directors. My name is Isabella Fulmar, and I am the Florida Collection and Outreach Librarian at the State Library, and my primary duties include reference services, collection development, and outreach. Today we'll be discussing the State Library's history and mission, the services that we provide for Florida library employees, and our main collecting areas, our circulating collection, state publications, federal documents, and our Florida Special Collection. First, a little bit of brief history. The State Library was founded in 1845 when Florida became a state. That is when our legislative library was established, and to this day we still still have a library in the Capitol on the seventh floor. Uh, the State Library came into its modern form with the hiring of W.T. Cash, this gentleman on the left, who was our first official State Librarian in 1927. We've gone through a lot of changes since 1845. After several years at the Capitol, the library was moved to the basement of the Supreme Court in this middle image, and in the 70s, the R.A. Gray Building was built across the street from there. This is the act creating a legislative library, um, wherein all of the books and maps belonging to the state were collected together back in 1845 at the time of statehood. And here is the law creating the position of the State Library Board and the State Librarian back in 1925, and as I said before, two years later, W.T. Cash became the first state librarian. These two laws have been digitized um, by the State Library in partnership with the Florida State College of Law. And I will go ahead and show you a little bit further in the presentation how these laws of Florida may be helpful to you in your work. The twin missions of the State Library are to collect, preserve, and make available the published history of Florida, as well as to serve as the primary information provider for state agencies, the Florida legislature, and legislative staff. And we also provide services for public library employees, such as the library employee e-card. If you're an employee at really any library in the state of Florida, including academic libraries, school libraries, or public libraries. You are eligible for a library e-card from the State Library. And this e-card grants you access to a number of resources, including the database Library and Information Science Source and our collection of professional e-books, also our Table of Contents service. Our Table of Contents service is an excellent way to keep up with recently published professional material. Through the service, you can get journal articles delivered directly to your inbox. Simply select the journals that you're interested in subscribing to, and we will email the latest table of contents from that most recent issue straight to your inbox, wherein you can request articles to be scanned and sent to you directly. With the use of your library e-card, you will also have access to 
a wide variety of electronic books available through our online catalog that we subscribe to through EBSCO. And these are available on a wide variety of topics within library science, including marketing and outreach, um, to conservation, to digital preservation, um, all kinds of helpful tools for you. So I'll go ahead and go through our collecting areas. First and foremost, our circulating collection provides information to Florida State employees. We collect Florida fiction, uh, and we also collect on many topics within Florida nonfiction. History, science, culture, political science, and current issues in Florida, uh, as well as prof professional development resources, how-to guides, and personal advice and wellness manuals. Our second main collecting area is state publications, which if you didn't know, are created for public distribution and are intended to communicate information to the public or to other state agencies. A permanent collection of state publications is retained at our institution, while depository libraries throughout the state make publications available to Floridians. The retention and distribution of state publications to depository libraries is managed by the Bureau of Library and Network Services. And that depository system was created in 1967, and upon its founding, 21 libraries became depositories. The State Library continually receives publications from Florida State agencies, then ships publications to depository libraries and the Library of Congress on a quarterly basis. Um, and then within this distribution, I should say that Actually, most state publications uh, lately are in electronic format. So there's really very low commitment or investment, I should say, on the part of the depository library in terms of personnel and space, since most of those items are electronic. And when you increase access throughout Florida for Floridians to these state publications, that drives usage, which is always great for statistics. If you are interested in participating, please write us at statepublications at dos.myflorida.com for more information, and we'll get uh, a copy of the depository handbook to you and answer any questions you may have. And this is just a little um, visual representation of the current depositories throughout the state. You can see that there's plenty of opportunity to increase access to the state publications within Central Florida along the state the Space Coast, and in various areas along the Panhandle. So I'll go ahead and go through the historical state publications, um, since, as I mentioned before, not only do we collect um, current state publications, but we also retain that permanent collection. A little bit ago, I showed you the State Library's founding documents which were an act of the legislature. Um, you can actually find special and local laws uh, related to your local government and sometimes even your library system within the laws of Florida. First step would be, in order to find those laws, would be to reference the index to special and local laws of Florida, which is available as an electronic document through our online catalog. If you're interested in older laws, you can select laws from statehood through 1970. And for more recent laws, you can select 1971 through 2019. We'll take as an example, the Alachua County Library District. You'll see that various laws relating to the library district can, are listed here, including the creation of the library district in 1985. You'll notice to the right, of that creation, a law number, 85-376, and that's the law, law of Florida citation, which you can then use to go to our Historical Laws of Florida page to find the text of that founding document, which is shown here. Also of interest to you might be library statistics at the State Library of Florida. The more recent library statistics that you're probably used to referencing are from 2015 to present, and those are available on the DLIS website. 
older statistics from 2002 to 2008 are also available electronically online through the State Library Catalog. In physical format, we also have library statistics from 1950s through the early 2000s available at our institution. So one of our main ongoing projects is the digitization of state agency publications, which we get tremendous um, usage out of um, on the part of our patrons. They are heavily requested, uh, largely due to their great value as historical resources. The one that I've chosen to show you here is the annual report of the State Board of Health of Florida from 1918, which reports governmental response to the public health crisis of the Spanish influenza pandemic, which at that time was raging through Florida as well as throughout the world. So these state agency publications, again, provide great historical value on a number of, of, um, of relevant uh, oppression topics. Additionally, we have a number of resources that we've digitized um, that may be helpful or a great use to youth services librarians, such as these coloring books shown here. These are available on our archive.org page, and they are largely produced by um, state agencies such as FWC and the Florida Department of Agriculture. They are free to print, um, and they can also be shared online uh, through social media. And back in April, we shared these through the State Library um, Facebook page, and it was our most liked and shared Facebook post possibly ever, um, just due to the great need um, on the part of parents for educational free materials for their children as remote learning um, becomes to be more predominant. Our planning collection includes a great number of comprehensive plans from Florida's counties and municipalities. And these comprehensive plans often include information about funding for public facilities, including public libraries. Additionally, the planning collection includes plans for facilities that were thankfully not actualized, such as this floating nuclear power plant that was being planned in 1974 before the Three Mile Island incident of 1979. Luckily, this was not built off of the coast of Jacksonville. Something that is highly requested and heavily used within our collections is our Florida map collection. And over 200 of these map maps have been digitized and shared to our Florida memory, um, to floridamemory.com. These have a great value to local historians um, due to the fact that in the case of these bird's eye maps, uh, they show which industries were predominant in an area at a given time and also the specific locations of businesses and um, public facilities. So to the right, you can see that I've taken a screenshot of our first public library in Tallahassee, the Walker Library uh, at the corner of Park Avenue in Calhoun. That building still stands today and it is currently uh, privately owned. So, um, all of you library directors, I'm sure, are very well familiar with city directories. Almost every public library has them. I'm just um, going to review them real quickly just because we do have, while it's not a comprehensive collection, um, our collection really does include excellent coverage statewide. So if there is um, a given gap in your collection, you know, say you're missing 1954 or 56, um, and a patron needs that information, um, you can check our catalog and maybe refer the patron our way, uh, and we can see if we can fill that gap for them. Um, and this city directory uh, is one of our favorites that we like to show on tours due to the fact that its sponsor is a combination undertaker and hardware store. You'll notice they have this same address and the same phone number. Um, 
quite an interesting business model. So we have uh, within our collection also a, a large assortment of broadsides. Um, and you'll see that the date ranges here from the time of um, the Legislative Council of the Territory of Florida, so Territorial Florida, all the way up through the 70s. And it includes um, political literature, advertisements, um, and even information about local sporting events. Um, so this is a really great source of information even for, even for local history in terms of local events that happened in the past or businesses that no longer exist. And they've all been digitized and uploaded to floridamemory.com and they're available in high resolution um, to be downloaded for free. And so these are a really great resource for if you're developing a display at your library on a given local history topic. Likewise, um, we have a pretty healthy collection of ephemera. Unlike the broadsides, these materials are not cataloged. They are arranged by subject within our collections, um, but they get a really quite a bit of use. Um, they get used quite a bit in uh, exhibits that the Florida Department of State puts on. Um, so again, they're just really like the broadsides, great visual material um, on topics within local history if you're putting together an exhibit or a display. Um, so if you need any visuals for, you know, such a project, feel free to reach out to us. In most cases, the state library can uh, make duplications for free. Um, within our Florida collection, we also have quite a few college course catalogs. Um, the one that you see on the left is from Edward Waters College, which is the first, um, the first institution of secondary education for African Americans that was formed um, after emancipation. It was operated by the AME Church and it's still in existence today. Um, so we have a lot of course catalogs from a number of HBUs um, as well as um, like all of Florida's public universities, FSU, uh, FIU, etc. They get used from time to time. They have uh, sometimes information about students in them, so they can occasionally be a good resource in terms of genealogical information. Another focus area of our Floridiana is um, our collection of church minutes and church publications. Uh, if you check out our archive.org page, we're actively scanning a lot of these um, conference programs and church minutes um, from historical churches. Um, including predominantly AME churches. Uh, so these get heavily used uh, by local historians and I would say also genealogists. I get requests from genealogists from time to time. Lastly, I'll just briefly touch on our collection of federal documents. I know that in your work as public library directors, um, when you're looking at um, policy information, you're gonna probably most likely be looking at the most recent. Uh, reports put together by the IMLS or the Congressional Research uh, Service. Um, but we do have these historic federal documents in our holdings which contain uh, program analyses and um, program evaluations and policy analyses on a variety of library topics such as ADA compliance or adult literacy um, and youth services, etc. So if you're interested in any of those, we can certainly um, make duplications if you need. Um, so thank you so much for your time and attention. If you have any questions for me, um, you can reach out to us via email at info at dus.myflorida.com or via phone. That's our reference line, area code 850-245-6682. Thank you.